Hey guys, Strike here, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. In the last one, we watched Little Miss Hentai Justice rip out her sex addict daughter's soul with nothing but her magic fingers, and finally busted down the dam of the viscous ocean of daddy issues that Mass Effect provides, and so we related far too hard and drowned under the enormous fucking pressure. This time, pretty much the exact same shit is gonna happen. Except, the only sex demon we're gonna be dealing with is our prickly boyfriend of the skies. Gary the Vicar- uh, Garrus Vicarian. <laughs> oh, I don't like Gary the Vicar. We're never doing that again. Oh no! I made a promise! Never mind, fuck Gary! We're gonna be crying! We're gonna be crying for fucking hours! Holy shit! We're starting this one off with the corpse of the SR1. Over on Alchera. I don't know how the hell we landed out here. Is this even Geth space? We were already near the Omega-4 Relay. Which I guess makes sense. That's where the Collectors are coming from. But, wow. Okay, never mind. We're starting out the mission with the only other thing that makes me cry in this game. The immense boredom that comes from probing Engana. Engana ain't worth my probe. Actually, it's very worth my probes. That's a lot of space cube. It's the only cult I've ever actually felt a part of. Oh, ha. I'm so glad we've been able to include you, Sarah. It's great to have you here. Did you go see Solarian Dad on Ilium? Has that happened yet? Solarian Dad? Which Solarian Dad? Kirahi? I don't remember Kirahi being in this game, but he very well could be. Um... I've been, like, everywhere on Ilium. I think. Have I not done all of it? I did Miranda's mission. I did Samara's mission. At least I picked up Samara. What am I missing? Hold on. Probe away. Do you know something that I don't, Horcrux? There's no way I'm missing out on a dad. Especially a froggy one. I want to be his little wiggly tadpole. I want to bathe in his spawn. Corona. Oh, shit. Oh, Corora. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> the fucking virus didn't evolve into an actual planet. It keeps inflating in size. It's an adorable Easter egg. Oh, no, 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 no! I have, I have. It's the Solarian, uh, with the, with the, with the Asari daughter, right? I love him. He's so fucking cute. Also, I don't understand how big Asaris get in time, because I think Solarians only live 40 years. Or, like, 50 years max. And Asari take, like, 20 years to get to maturity. So this man, this man banging at age 10. Gross. Kuro is essentially a great rock in space, really? I could never have checked. Um, no, I, th I don't think I care about this at all. Can't interact with secondary conversation happening around- Yeah, 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 it's just an NPC bark. But it's adorable, I love him. We, uh, we came across him a couple sessions back when we first went to Ilium. He's my fucking favorite, man. There's multiple dads, I think there's a Krogan dad as well. Or was it Turian? Elcor? Turian. I don't remember. I know there's an Elcor dad somewhere to a, uh, to an Asari. No, you know what it is? My romance interest, my, <laughs> the one that I fucked in Mass Effect Andromeda is part Elcor, which is really, really fucking worrying. Because you gotta, I mean, they're like the squishy space tank horses of the skies. You only gotta assume the cock is to scale. And you only gotta assume it transfers to their daughters. Like Asari are all women, the cock's gotta be stored somewhere. Can't keep your race going without a cock. Alcara. Gara's crust is composed of carbon and water and water ice. While low density, it's I don't care. I just wanna find my boys. I just need to find my boys. Norman! Norman, where are you? It's been like extra time as well. Like I know two years was long enough. But I get the feeling maybe I should have came here very early. So I don't have to look at the rotting corpses of all my old friends. Presley? On our Are you him? Who else is here? The wreckage of the SSV Normandy on the planet's surface. No life signs or mechanical activity detected. Stable landing zone located amid the crash site. Oh, <laughs> so many vaginas. It's the tentacles. They just have to ink. You have to get them all scared. Oh, Norman. It's not even that fucked up. You know how on fire you were? And we show up in our stupid fucking taxi. Don't you dare have the Cerberus logo anywhere near the OG. Wait, why am I alone? 
Why am I alone? I wanted to bring Garrus and Tali. Garrus? Buddy? This isn't a private thing. I waited so long so I could bring them. I'm also- I'm wearing, like, my- my OG armor. I'm not even wearing the, uh, the special boy armor. Weird. Why? And why am I alone? What the fuck are they doing to me? Fuck, this is lonely. This is lonely and really fucking ominous. You'd have to imagine an Elcor would produce a sari with a several con concentric sets of labia. Yeah, but like, on the mouth, and that ruins everything, man. The mouth is its own haven. Like putting your penis to sleep in a slippery feather bed. I guess it's more of a water bed. I don't fucking know. A leaky water bed. Oh, did I even see whose dog tag that was? Because I imagine that's what we're here for. <laughs> I have to smash everything? I have to break, like, the last remaining vestiges of our happiness. Just so I can pick up these ourselves. It used to tell us who it is, I think. Yeah, Raymond Tanaka. I actually remember that name. I, I don't know why. I don't know where the hell we- Oh, I can place the monument. But I think placing the monument makes me leave, doesn't it? Maybe not. It seems to just want to go here. Helen Lowe. I definitely don't remember who the fuck that is. Who built this monument for me? And what even is it? Oh, it's the Norman and it's arsebound tidal wave. Okay, sure, what the fuck is that? That implies that the only reason that we're able to fly better than any other ship in the fucking ga galaxy is we're getting Cthulhu'd by a cthulhu Getting sodomized by fucking Cthulhu, there you go. The entire way, that's- that's not right. We can blame Joker for this one. Oh, I don't care about you though. Did we really need Kaiden there? <laughs> can I remember anyone else? I would have actually been sad if it was even Presley. And in the OG game, you get to spend like five seconds with him. It wasn't even Kaiden. It was like Alexei Dubinenskev or something. What a horrible, horrible name. I hope you're finally able to find peace in the afterlife. Now that your name has finally fucked off and you can call yourself whatever the hell you want. How do I get down there? By walking, by using my damn legs. Okay, exciting, good. Wish someone could have given me my tutorial on legs. Monica Nugalesco or something? <laughs> These are like the people who made Shepard what he was. They were the people working behind the scenes to make sure I could save the fucking world. And I don't even know their damn names. I can't even pronounce them. I can't even pretend I know them. Hector Emerson. Okay, they kind of kind of went easy on me with that one. Then again, it's in space. Ours could be pronounced completely fucking different. Hector. Amazon. <laughs> Welcome to the Amazon. Right, let's let's break this shit. Man, I remember this being a lot darker. It's ominous and it's sad, but the Norman isn't as intact as I remember it being. Marcus Greco. So why were you guys hiding in boxes? Or is this just an absolute miracle? That the blast hit you so hard that you got like your own permanent coffins out of nowhere. It's the Mako! But the Mako died at the end of Mass Effect 1, didn't it? I guess we have more than one. Amino Wabiri. Who the fuck cares? I'm not laying the Mako to right. You're the wrong Mako. It may look the same, but it's a coat of lies! Mandira Raman. Raman? It's not gonna be Raman, is it? I wouldn't hire someone that's gonna distract me that much. That's gonna seem so very delicious to me. I miss you, buddy! You're so much cooler than the Hammerhead! Set him free! Honestly, this thing could climb up 90 degree war faces. Turn on the boosters once, it's free, and it will, like, repair the Norman on its own. Nothing is built like the fucking Mako, man. The Mako can't break. I guess it couldn't have died at the end of Mass Effect fucking 1, because Omnigel used to exist, you know? Nothing's built to the overwhelming standards of the Mako anymore. Just slap some Omnigel on it. Completely fucking back to full health. All the parts are just shattered off, they just suddenly exist again. Like a fucking axolotl regrowing its dick. If only the Norman could have done that, but no. No, the Turian influence ruined everything. Fucking Gary. 
Hey, what do we got here? Just, I don't want to read about the experience. J. Harvey Gladstone. These are all just former presidents. What the fuck is this? The ones I can pronounce are, anyway. Silas Crosby, I believe it. I, who's called Crosby? In space. Can we move past these now? Okay, Gamin Barrett. I can work with that one. Holy shit. How many was that? Twelve. Man, I should probably not be insulting half the fucking people that are laid to rest here. Who aren't even laid to rest. They just, you know, turn back to the stardust they came from. Like, oh, we didn't even think about Presley. We thought about the keyboard that we occasionally tap. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Entry one. Unrecoverable data. Ask uh, data recovered. Spoke to the commander about this. I corrupt all these damn aliens aboard the Alliance's most advanced ship. I don't trust them. A spun recoverable data. That damned Asari. An Aquarian? What does Shepard think this is? A zoo? I wonder who this could be. Remember the guy who I was just like, oh, I really miss him. I wish I could find his dog tags. Yeah, this is Presley. He respected me because I was a dick to him. I thought dicks respect other dicks. That's the whole point. It's all just a measuring contest and mine is unstoppable. Mm. Data recovered with the Quarian. It seems she's on some kind of pilgrimage, trying to improve the lot of her home ship. I can understand that. I would unrecoverable data babysit my children or anything. But if she has to be on board, I suppose that's not too bad. For a while now, and I've been looking back at past entries in this journal. How blind I was at the time. I came on the ship firmly believing humanity was on its own in the Garrett galaxy. Corrupt Shepard brought all these aliens on board. And there's no way we could have accomplished what we did without them. I'm proud to say corrupt die for any member of this crew. Regardless of what world they were born on. He might be a space racist. He was. He was a space racist. Until Pretty Little Shep changed his mind. It's pictures from the OG Mass Effect 1. So it looks so much uglier than what we've experienced. What I've ever experienced, really. Because, you know, I played it modded to hell. I've never played Vanilla Mass Effect 1. The Legendary Edition is the most vanilla Mass Effect 1 I've ever played. And that's a remake. Addison Chase. Oh, this is rough, man. This is rough. I know, I know this nearly broke me last time. Was I just really, really emotional? About the Norman? Maybe it was when I- maybe I played it really early on when, like, the Norman first blew up. And I didn't really have all my boys back and I thought Garrus was dead or whatever. Jamin Bakari. Wait, wait, Izo! Yes, let's steal everything the corpses of our beloved have left. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. That's what you're good for, after all. Man, it was right as he became a good person, too. I guess he redeemed himself before he died, but... If only he could have spent five minutes being a decent boy. Carlton Trucks? Was his name Carlton Trucks? It's the most American, real American, American fucking hero, American dream name I've heard in my fucking life. Oh my god. Wish I was Carlton Trucks. Then I'd really have a fucking cult going. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's way too intact. That's way too, that's gonna hurt me. That's gonna hurt me fucking walking through. Because Norman 2 is nowhere near as, like, filled to the fucking brim with boys. I leveled up? Let's have, like, the happy celebrate sounds while I'm walking through the ashes of my friends. Rosamund Draven. That's not a real name. I, I don't believe you. I swear this place wasn't as intact as it is now. I, I guess they know better than I do. <laughs> We're literally working on the damn game. Talitha Draven. Oh, fuck. We had family in here? Why? Ah, uh, yes, in memory of the man who is still alive. How very, very dearly sad. Like, I can't have been sad about Joker. I think I am just sad about the Norman in general. Because the SR2 will never be quite as pretty. It's too square. It's been chasing parked cars for too long, man. That is an incredibly flat face. The Norman 1, it was so fucking curvy. It was so thick. It was the ideal woman. The ideal woman, Norman. Um, I mean, you could be called. Joker looks dead. He did. He looks more dead there than he is now. What? 
No, it's more dead now. What? I don't know what the hell I was trying to say. He's not dead in either situation. <laughs> yeah, that implied that he just is dead. Abhishek Pakti. Complaining about all the Asia, the, the Asia, aliens, but <laughs> at the very least, like apparently racism amongst humanity just doesn't seem to exist anymore. We have everyone from everywhere possible. <laughs> Absolute slap in the fucking face. That would be to like the awful people in the world. Like racism has finally stand out. They're like, fine, fine. I guess people can have rights. And then aliens show up and we're like, yeah, we gotta get on with those too now. <laughs> I hope that happens. Fuck those people. All right, where are we going? There's just two more dog tags and I'm not leading without them. Why are you slandering Axel? I didn't slander axolotls. I said that, you know, they work in the same way that Omnigel does. And I said that forever ago. How are you all the way back there? Am I buffering? I can't be if Sarah saw Joker at the same time as me. Poor Crux, you're just broken. It's fine. I won't even be responding to you forever now. And it's your fault. I mean, I've been here. I must have been here. I just expected to be able to find a dog tag back there. By the way, Ultra Fiesta? I'm trying it now. It's like fine. It reminds me of Mango Loco, but not as intense. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you. No, I watched a video. <laughs> so are you like behind, or it just you were just holding that in? You were seething over it until you couldn't hold it anymore. <laughs> you let it burst free. I haven't been in here. What are these? Are these escape pods? Sleep pods? Because how did none of us get to escape? I thought most of us got to escape. I definitely sent away a lot of escape pods. Ordinate La Flame. La Flamme. La Flame. La Flamme doesn't sound nearly as impressive. Wow, though. He sounds like someone who definitely belongs in Dragon Age. I wonder if they're crew members. I wonder if there are people who worked on, like, the original game or something. That would be really cool, because I don't think we had names for the vast majority of our crew. I think occasionally we'd have a couple of co uh, conversations sounding off uh, in the background. If we'd walk past, like, some specific crew members in the same way they're like, Are, you ca are your kids dead yet? Are your kids dead yet? Are your kids dead yet? How is your crispy wife? Conversations keep going uh, with the, those two Cerberus crewmen. But that gets a, the Normandy feels a hell of a lot more alive in Mass Effect 3, I find. That it, it is just, I think it's my favorite all round for many, many, many reasons. Hello? It's rare that a series just gets better and better and fucking better. I think a lot of people are most nostalgic for Mass Effect 2, and I can completely understand that. It's where the series, like, really hits its fucking stride and everything just gets better and better and better. Um, I wonder if they. Like, help kickstart the game and, like, playtested it. That would make sense. That would make sense. Maybe it's the people who, like, worked on Mass Effect 1 and then moved on before Mass Effect 2. And then, you know, it's similar to, like, the Normandy SR2 being Mass Effect, as, you know, they're the second dev team. I'm completely theorizing. I'm sure it's very, very close with just, like, one little goggle away. If we ask, you know, Mr. Google himself. He descends from the heavens. He fills up our lobes with his knowledge. Yeah, I'll probably do that once we leave. I miss you, Norman. I always will. Caroline Granado. There's nothing like the SR1, man. I re- mm, They cannot fuck up the ship, man. In Mass Effect 4. If they- Like the Tempest, which was the ship in Andromeda. It was fine. But it didn't have any fucking personality in comparison. It was huge! There was a lot to fucking run around. It wasn't separated all by fucking uh, elevators like the Normandy is. But the Norman has so much flair. And I guess you have a lot longer to get attached to it, but not really to the SR1. The SR1 means the fucking world to me, and we only really get one game. The Cerberus version makes it look ugly as hell half the time. Although I would still cry if it died before me again. The first Mass Effect 3 ending I got ruined my life and I still don't want to talk about it. I cried so goddamn hard. I liked mine, but I still cried because the games were over. Oh god, I cried so many times in that fucking game. I wonder if Mass Effect 2 is going to make me cry at all. Mass Effect 3 will. That will be the first time you witness me properly break down on fucking stream. Mamoru Hackett, my boy! Commander Shepard, 
The Alliance was grateful to receive the information you found on this Normandy's crash site. And we send it, send it out to the affected families. By finding those dog tags, you will provide a peace of mind for a lot of people, Commander. I thank you on their behalf. I haven't heard his voice in so very long, but I think it's like vaguely like that. I, I just wish I could talk to Garrus about it or Joker or anything, but I don't think I can because DLC. And you're very, very rarely able to talk about DLC missions. I don't know why I was dreading that so much. If anything, it was like a really, really sweet homage. And just a really nice little bit of RP as Shep. Like, you know Shep would absolutely want to go fucking do that. The gameplay isn't particularly interesting, but it, it it's something that you have to do. There's, there's no way you could, like, you know, it's a, it's a really nice break from the action as you go and relive a load of memories. I imagine it's a lot better when, you know, I, there were, what, how many years between Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2? 3, I believe? 2007 to 2010? So yeah, I guess reliving those memories from all that fucking time ago would have been a hell of a lot more impactful than, you know, a month ago for me. Help Thane, help Garrus, help Grunt, help Morden, give Liara intel, help Tali, and all this other shit in between that we'll get to eventually. Uh, I cried so goddamn hard. Rescue Doc- I forgot about her! Holy shit, it's been a long time, but I'm pretty sure she's DLC, and we won't be dealing with that yet. Destroy the Blood Pack base is another thing we gotta do. There's so many areas here as well that we haven't explored in the fucking slightest that we will be doing by the end of the game. We're getting 100% galaxy completion. There is no other way fucking about it. Citadel, Thane, Garrus, Grunt, Morden. I don't know what to do! Because we go to T'Chanka, and that opens up a lot to do on fucking T'Chanka as well. And I will get so invested in that, and that will mean that I can't go out and help Garrus yet. As much as I don't want to, as much as I don't want to do Garrus before I do Grunt and Morden, because he is the ultimate, I think we might have to, because I want to be able to bring Grunt on my mission- uh, sorry, I want to be able to bring Garrus on my missions into Chanka. What do you think? What do we- we could also go help Tali, but I think she is gonna be my grand finale. I love her so much. I love Garrus so- this is so hard! Fuck it! I think Tachanka. I think. Maybe. Yes! I'm excited. But I'm also really nervous. There's so much is about to go through my fucking mind at once. No, you know what? I do cry in this game. And I know exactly the fucking points and we might be about to fucking hit one. Hopefully it will be replaced by the sheer fucking adrenaline. Uh, Ruam. I like system often top off their fuel tanks at Ruam stations. Council demilitarization enforcement mission. Kdem. Maintains a token garrison to monitor any potential sale of fuel to known sub subversives and terrorists. Okay. Why the hell do I care? What do you mean fuel? You have nothing. You have like an ounce of palladium. I'm leaving you forever. You're the worst space marble I've ever been to. I guess there's not going to be a whole lot around Tachanka. I imagine the Krogans absolutely ravaged it as soon as they were ascended. No! Never mind! I guess they were ripped straight to, uh, Citadel space. They probably didn't need to do the mining on their own, because, uh, the Salarians gave them everything they could ever need. So once again, to recap with, like, Krogan lore and everything... Garrus is best girl. Stop it. Um... I'll read the rest of chat in a second. Uh, yeah, so to recap, like, Krogan lore... There's a reason they're a little bit, like more brutish and just warlike and not stupid they're never stupid they're just intelligent in different ways it's very rare you see a krogan scientist they exist they're nowhere near as common as obviously like the salarians or even the turians or something like or even humans um krogan won like a spacefaring race they didn't build their own ships salarians were about to go fucking extinct from the invasion of the Rachni, who were infected by the reaper's indoctrination because they went to the omega-4 relay i think i think i'm doing all that right um, so then the Salarians met with the Kro- they just landed on the Krogan fucking homeworld and were like, Hey, we fucking need you. We'll give you all this, we'll give you land, we'll give you settlements on other planets. We will show you the rest of the fucking skies if you come and murder all these people. Cause you know, you're massive and there are millions of you. And then they regretted the Krogans being uh, uplifted cause they kicked the shit out of the Rachni, ended that war, but then kind of wanted more themselves and they could fucking take it because there's millions of them and they're armed with the highest Krogan, uh, sorry, Solarian technology of all time. Uh, to be honest, I just enjoy watching you play, so up to you. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it. 
Salarian's a first thought. What the hell's going on? Ah, uh, Kruban is a tightly locked Venusian hothouse. Its surface perpetually obscured by clouds of sulfur and carbon dioxide. The first group of Krogan brought into orbit by the Salarian uplift teams requested a trip to Kerban. The Salarians at first thought the Krogan were confused about the nature of Kerban's environment. The planet is named for a Krogan mythological paradise in which honorable warriors feast on the internal organs of their enemies. In fact, Krogan astronomers had correctly deduced that the nature of Kruban the, in the years before the global holocaust, in the two millennia since, what the fuck? Had greatly deduced the nature of Kruban in the years before the global holocaust. Okay, never mind, I was reading that really wrong. In the two millennia since, Kruban had come to be thought of as an ideal test of one's toughness. Every year, a few Krogan attempt to land on Krugan and exit their sh Kruban and exit their ships naked in an attempt to prove their Kroganhood. The planet's surface is littered with the crushed, corroded remains of their ships. Only one, Shoth Norda, is known to have returned from the surface alive, albeit with most of his bones crushed and all four of his lungs damaged by sulfuric gas. Norda recovered from his trial to the adulation of his people. Until he died in 1943, he could lie with any fertile female he wishes. So, what? Why? Why are you allowing that man who crippled himself and got filled with radiation and all like the mutations possible? But he could have caused the genophage. It could have come from his limp, broken, irradiated nuclear cock. Okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> the Solarian just took credit. Yeah, we, we did that thing. We ruined all their dicks. It was us, trust me. We have that power. Frogman, destroyer of dicks. Ah, uh, right, what do we got over here? Also, you don't even know about Tali's romance or crux. You haven't done it. You haven't experienced it for yourself. You will cry. She's adorable. Launching probe. She's just 100% best girl for male chef. I'm, I'm sure Garrus is obviously best girl for femme chef. It's the mandibles, man. They do wonderful things. They're very, very welcoming. The way they bite ever so softly. Right, where am I? The way he injects his venom. You gotta assume that he's like a little bit venomous, right? He is a bit like an insect. Like, other birds don't have mandibles. Unless he's made of bone? I can never really tell what he is. There's another planet out here and I can't find it. There's one that I'm just not finding. Why does Aralak have to be so fucking big? Hey! I just here for the Krogans and I already, like, just got myself prepared. And all that preparedness is going away. Tachanka is the Kro- Oh, there you are, you tiny little pinball piece of shit. Durak, you're incredibly round. It's the roundest boy I've ever encountered. Let's, uh, no, 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 no. That's exactly what I want. I just want it to spread to the double tumor. There you go. So much cancer for you, Durak. Congratulations. You win the prize of a slow, painful, balding death. But is it better than it'd be an awful empty galaxy without you? Bro, Garrus? Launching probe. The bromance and the bro jobs that he provides. No, the bromance between Male Shep and Garrus is incredible on it in itself. I don't know how Fem Shep exactly like is it able to interact Rogue with the other women. I mean, obviously Liara is a romance option. Um, I don't know if she's the only lesbian one. She might genuinely be. I know there's a couple gay options uh, for male Shep in Mass Effect 3. Tachanka. Scarred by bombardment craters, radioactive rubble, and choking ash, salt flats, and alkaline seas. Tachanka can barely support life. Thousands of years ago, life grew in fierce abundance under the F-Class star Aralak. A Reich clan wa- What? Okay. Word meaning- Oh, word! If it's a world! Meaning Eye of Wrath. Tree analogs grew in the thick jungles, their roots growing out of shallow, silty seas. Life fed upon life in an evolutionary crucible. The world died in nuclear firestorms after the Krogan split the atom. A little ice age of nuclear winter killed off much of the remaining plant life. In recent centuries, many Krogan have returned to their homeworld. The reduced albedo... I don't know what that is. Why is it so close to libido? What's, like, planetary 
sex drive. I don't understand. It's caused global temperatures to rise. In order to maintain livable temperatures, a vast shroud was assembled. The L1 Lagrange point. It is maintained by Council Me Demilitarization Enforcement Mission Kadem, which is based on orbiting battle stations. Visitors to Chichanka land at their own risk. CDEM will not attempt to extract citizens threatened by clan warfare. The ecology of Tachanka is deadly. Nearly every native species engages in some predatory behavior. Even the remaining vegetation is carnivorous. Travel beyond guarded areas is strongly discovered. discouraged. They have 2.1 billion boys. Capital is currently Erdnot, which means the city that the clan owned. Weird! So that capital city changes depending on whichever clan is in power right now, which is currently Clan Erdnot. We might know a particularly sexy member of that clan. Who might just have returned home after a pretty big fucking mission. God, this is a bad idea! Why am I bringing a Solarian? No. Not yet. We'll bring him later. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to bring Grunt here. It's his fucking homeworld and he has to come here eventually. But there's gonna be something really wholesome about bringing these two, I think. And I'm ready to fucking witness. Ah, uh, it's been a while since we brought Tali, I think. Yeah, a big fucking while. Jesus. I could have given her ultimate AI hacking, but she needs to be a quarry machinist very, very quick. You'll never be alone. He's perfect! Bro job? Absolutely fucking bro jobs. Once again, the mandibles. That soft little nibble. His dextro-rash-causing tongue. Do not ingest. 